All right, we are back here on the podcast. NFL Draft is coming up this week. We are getting ready to break down the draft ball angle. So we're going to take a look at some of the top prospects on the board for ahead of Thursday's first round. Joining as always, great friend of the podcast. He covers college football for the Sporting News. Bill Bender is here. Bill, how are you? I'm doing well, Mike. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming on here. And obviously, I want to start at the top with uh, Caleb Williams, the projected number one pick. The Bears trade away. Justin Fields of the Steelers for a bag of balls basically have the right to take Williams and set their franchises up again here. What are the Bears getting in Caleb Williams? Oh, I mean, you know, a fantastic playmaker. Uh, Heisman Trophy caliber, obviously, won at once. Uh, way, the way he can go off script, moves like a running back when he runs. And I say that by, like, his lower portion of his body. I've been told that, you know, ability to scramble. I don't, Mike, I don't know about you. I don't do the Mahomes comparison. I just don't think there's anybody that compares the Mahomes at the pro game right now. But some of those playmaking skills are there. And I'm also not as hung up on the – don't ask me to talk about Caleb Blake's fingernails is what I'm saying. I, I don't care about that part. I'm more interested in how he uh, leads his team. Yeah, for sure here. And obviously, I know we've heard complaints about the phone, about the pink phone, and like, it can be emotional after a loss here. But like, in terms of the hype this guy is getting here, I mean, I feel like every few years ago, oh, this is the best guy since Andrew Luck comparisons. I feel like he's the latest on that bill. Like, in terms of like, right. comparing to like Trevor Lawrence, for example, coming out of college, you, get, you think he's getting more or less hype than Trevor Lawrence was? Probably less than Trevor. Trevor in college was about as slam dunk as you could be because you can see the way that the ball came off his hand when he threw the football. But, you know, back to what you were saying about the phone, like if it's coming from guys my age in their 40s, I wouldn't pay attention to it. Now, if the criticism was coming from you know, guys that have played with him or guys that were in the locker room with him, then you would start to worry, right? But what some 40-year-old man says, it has nothing to do with Caleb Williams. Now, He'll have to prove it at the next level. He's going to a franchise that's been a quarterback killer for, you know, ever, pretty much. And those are the things that I would be more concerned about, that they make sure that they get enough help around Caleb Williams, unlike Justin Fields, who didn't have much when he was in Chicago. Yeah, that's for sure here. And it seems like Williams is a fair lock to go number one pick here. And uh, we might have potential that quarterback go two, three, four here. This is that tier of Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Jaden McCarthy. See the next three guys on the board with May and Daniels a tick above McCarthy, depending on who you talk to here. So if you were to rank these guys in terms of like who would you want if you were an NFL team, like how would you rank them? Uh, mine might be a little bit different. I mean, I like I, I think you gotta take Caleb on the upside factor one, though I think Drake May is actually right there. You know, I see what Drake May's been able to do at North Carolina the last two years with far less offensive firepower with a defense that faltered. Yeah, he slid a little bit some games down the stretch, but he's an all-ball, no-nonsense quarterback uh, that I think will do a nice job. Jaden's interesting to me because of how far he came along and developed in his time at LSU. I mean, if you don't ask you this question after his debut against Florida State two years ago, I've been like, well, no, he's not going to play in the NFL. But he, he does have a skill set that I enjoy to watch, and I think he'll do fine. He'd be next. JJ's interesting. I mean, I'm really high on him. Some people aren't. I like the intangibles with him. I like the arm. I also, have, I've kind of held on this one. I think he's going to have a better NFL. I think he'll do better in some ways in the NFL than he did in college because it'll be able to showcase him more than maybe Michigan did. Yeah, that's for sure here. I feel like the Daniels comparison is interesting here because obviously a lot of people are going to Look at Lamar Jackson as a Heisman winner, like unconventional skill set. Where a team that drafts him needs to have a plan on how to use him here. It makes me curious, like where the fit's going to be for Jaden Daniels. I feel like you, like, he has a lot of like probably the highest ceiling anybody outside Williams in this group. But I feel like you have to coach him correctly if you get it out of him. Oh, it'd be neat if Washington took him, you know, and then they go, and then you have Lamar and Jaden on the Beltway, and, and the way that both of those guys play. I mean, I think it's easy to compare him to Lamar. His numbers were very comparable to Lamar at LSU last season. And, you know, the way that he's developed as a passer has been really good to see. Like I said, I think he sees the field better now than when he did come to LSU. So, yeah, I think he's got that high upside. 
you know, New England, I'm really curious to see what they're going to do because it's exactly what I just told you about Chicago with them. You know, yeah, it's great. You drafted quarterback. Hey, you did when you drafted Mac Jones. You better help him. Yeah, that's for sure. I'll see if they can help him here. And uh, obviously, the, of the top of this, top guy on the board, other than the quarterback, you're seeing Marvin Harrison Jr. from Ohio State. And Ohio State's used a lot of great receivers in recent years. Garrett Wilson, Jeff Vans are aware of him. Chris Olave down in New Orleans here. But it feels like Marvin Harrison feels like the best receiver come out of this of Ohio State in recent memory. Would you agree with that? You think he's better than these other guys who just came out? I think he's safest pick in the draft. Yeah, I, I do. I think if I, you're you know what you're getting, stud receiver, uh, dimension, route running, ability to contort his body in ridiculous ways to make catches. I mean, how many times when you watched the Ohio State the last couple of years did you did jaw drop watching him? It was amazing. Um, he, he he's that guy and not to mention his father was pretty good you know <laughs> as a hall of fame receiver one of the best route runners maybe ever uh so i think yeah all of that's there and he'll have a great career and it sounds like arizona now doesn't shortchange malik neighbors or roma dunze those guys are wide receiver ones as well so I and mean, this is, has the potential i didn't believe it till i really dug into it this does have the potential 10 years down the line, we could be talking about it as the greatest wide receiver class ever. And that's knowing that Marvin Harrison, Terrell Owens, same class. Yeah, Yeah, that's pretty crazy to think about here. And as I asked about the receiver class, because I mentioned neighbors, Roma Dunze. It feels like this receiver group is very, very deep. I feel like if you need a playmaker here, there's going to be about like like five or six to go round one. There's another like 10 that could be helpful to you on day two. Well, that's where the game's headed, right? I mean, we saw this. You saw the difference in what drafting Jamar Chase can do for you. And, and the Bengals did that when they paired him with Joe Burrow. You've seen it's a little bit different than maybe when Terrell Owens was drafted. I mean, I, the mismatches are on the outside. The game's spread out. It's a pass first league. We, we, we know. I'm not telling you anything you already don't know. But I'm just saying that's more reason why you're seeing receivers kind of replace what running back used to be. This is the outside of quarterback, and in some ways, the same as quarterback. It's a high-demand position in the first round. Yeah, that's for sure here. And uh, one guy who's not really a receiver but can as receiver traits is tight end Brock Bowers here, who feels like there's so much like, excitement about how great he can be in the NFL. There's a lot of comparisons to Kyle Pitts, who's came out, what, fourth overall two years ago. There's a lot of buzz. The Jets could take him at 10 if they don't have a receiver or, ta- or tackle they like there. Uh what do you think about what Brock Bowers can do at the next level? Oh, he's pretty special. I mean, here's the thing. I, I'm working on some safe picks for the NFL draft at Sporting News. And to me, if you watch the guy dominate like I did for the last two years, um, fantastic route runner, took over the Auburn game last year. That's the one, if I was Bowers, I would, if you're watching Bowers, say, pop that one in, see how a tight end can take over a game, how he's a mismatch, can run the football. He, I think he threw it a couple times. They, they would run reverses with him. He he is complete package. Uh, you know, and then in the interview room, he's no nonsense. You're not going to get a lot of quotable, you know, stuff that you're going to le- use for flowery speeches, but that's fine. He's an all-ball guy, and I think he's going to do uh, very well at the next level. Yeah, I definitely say so. That's interesting here to consider here. Like, a lot of teams are – hasn't to take a tight end early because they feel, you know, the value of the pick may not be as high as if you hit on a receiver or a tackle or like a premier, like second, a like premier pass rusher here. Like, do you think this Bowers is like that special that he's worth that high a pick where they're talking about picking him? Jim Harbaugh might think so. Yeah. And I think that's the broad assumption, which not necessarily a Jim Harbaugh. I can't say that, I guess, that he's not a Jim Harbaugh tight end. I, if I could, he's not like a Kobe Fleener type or a Colston Loveland type like he had at Michigan. He's more of a kind of mismatched tight end in the slot. I don't even think Jim Harbaugh's coaching is anybody like this guy. And But I think the mismatches he can create in the middle of the field, and that is part of the game. I mean, look no further than what he does with Travis Kelsey to look what an NFL team could potentially do with Brock Bowers in creating that mismatch. So, yeah, I think he is. You mentioned Kyle Pitts. It's inherently risky, I get it, to take a tight end with a top five pick. But Bowers would be one of those guys that I'd be willing to do it for. Yeah, it sounds good here. Obviously, we had a lot of offensive tackles last year who did well. Because we have a smaller group at the top, but a deep group overall. We've heard Joe 
Joe Alt's the top guy for most boards. Olu Fashano, J.C. Latham here. Right, like the think of the tackle class. Ah, it's the other position group where there's everybody there. I like all the lots. I like uh, Waga, the Oregon State tackle. I like Fashano. I've watched Fashano really closely in the Michigan Ohio State games. He got beat a couple times, but nothing that you were like, oh, this guy's a bust. I mean, it is a tack- Mim, the Georgia tackle. There's another guy that probably will fall behind those guys this year, but still could end up being a Pro Bowl tackle at the next level. So, yeah, I definitely like this tackle class a lot. I think there's depth. The, the three positions, tackle, quarterback, receiver, make that a little weird. I mean, because then you're kind of looking at the other side of the ball, and I know we're going to do that. And, you know, not a stretch to say that 17 to 18 players could be quarterback, receiver, tackle in this first round. Yeah, I mean, there's also rumors, like I've seen some mocks are, yeah, where people don't even take a defender in the top 10 picks. It almost never happens. So in terms of defensive class here, I know we have a few pass rushers. We have a good defensive tackle. We have a few corners here. Like, What do you think of the, def- the top defenders on the board here? Well, I mean, Dallas Turner is one of those guys. You know, I, I can rarely go wrong with an Alabama first-round pick. They're always there. Uh, Chop Robinson's another guy that, that definitely um, could be – one of those edge rushers, Jared Verse. I like Jared Verse a lot. I like Jared Verse mo- more than most. Um, so uh, I think those are the type of guys that could go. The cornerback position is interesting. Alex Kenyon Mitchell. You know, I, I'm not, I don't know how you do this, Mike, but I don't necessarily look at pro football focus as an end all be all. But I can tell you that Kenyon Mitchell was the top corner in coverage, the overall rating for, for pro football focus each of the last two seasons with 15, 50% of their snaps and coverage. <laughs> That's all I need right there. That's how you find a mod Gardner. That's how you find Devin Witherspoon. You find the guys that can cover. Yeah, that's for sure here. I know, like, Byron Murphy's a good defensive tackle option as well here. It just feels like that, like, a lot of the defensive players that get pushed down because the top of the offensive, like, class is so, is so, so stacked. Yeah, and, and it is. And that doesn't mean, like, Dallas Turner won't have an impact. It won't mean that Jerzon Newton's another guy I've watched just consistently produce at, at Illinois and, and not that I don't have too many worries about him being a bust because he's, he's been in an NFL type defense for the last two years going against teams that have more than Illinois does and continue. I mean, 50 plus tackles the last two years. Uh, that out of the interior, that's invaluable when you're able to do that. So I think he's a guy to keep an eye on as well. Yeah, and we, we talked about, or you mentioned a second ago, you think that obviously quarterback, receiver, and offensive tackle seem the best, most depth in this class. In terms of the quarterback depth here, like, what do you think about guys like Bo Nix and Michael Panks, even the next couple quarterbacks on the board here? Rick? Do you think of the shot while this guy sneaks into the first round, or do you think that these are guys that are high day two picks? I think there's a shot they could both go in the first round because of the, like, like we are talking about, the supply and demand. Uh, it's like, for those of us who have a daughter, it's like Taylor Swift tickets, man. When they're on, <laughs> when they're on the market, they're going to go, and quarterbacks are going to go. And Penix and Knicks are certainly two that I think will go. And then you start to get into okay, well, who are the day two guys? You know, where does Spencer Rattler and Michael Pratt go? They're going to get a lot of attention. And, and I tell people, you know, you look at back at last year's draft, Aiden O'Connell was that middle round steal, and that happens. Like I, you, you can laugh and say, well, how was he a steal? He played a lot of football last year for a guy that was a fourth, fifth round pick for the Raiders. So there'll be that that kind of guy in this draft as well, and it could be Michael Pratt or Rattler. Yeah, for sure. Let's go to the other way here. Like, you know, about where the most depth is. Like, if what position are you looking at here? You say, like, if I need this, I'm in trouble. Like, there's not a lot here. Well, I mean, there is a lot of edge rushers. There's the you know that middle linebacker that's not real deep. Uh, you'd have to go down to like a Jeremiah Trotter, those type guys that, that you know, they got to be able to play coverage as well. And I know how the game has changed a little bit. Not, not the strongest draft there. I think interior line, I always look at that. I think, you know, one guy to watch, and it's not deep, but Zach Frazier, I think, is going to have a really good NFL career. The center out of West Virginia. I know he broke his leg, but, you know, I, I just look at him as, as one of those guys that could absolutely be a steal. You also feel like running backs not getting a lot of attention here. I don't feel like there's that – one guy last year was like Bajan Robinson or Jameer Gibbs that was just like everybody's clamoring to get that guy in their roster. I feel like there's a lot of teams that's content to wait for like day two or day three for their running backs. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, you still get a Blake Corm, Donald Taylor, a guy that you know, obviously 
suffered a torn ACL. Bucky Irving going to get some attention. The Oregon running back. So they, yeah, there there's some guys. I like Blake Corum more than most, but I I understand getting there. And one of the frequent comparisons with Blake Corum right now is Devin Singletary. Now you may say, well, what has Devin Singletary done? I I would argue. I've still been a contributor on a pretty good NFL team for a couple of years here. And, you know, maybe not a 1500 yard back, but I think that's what you're getting at. These guys aren't guys that are going to be like Bajan where they step up and get the number of touches that he got as a rookie. Yeah, for sure. And the last thing here is, uh, obviously we, we, if you follow your mocks, you know, the big names, you know, who everybody's looking at here, who are some sleepers that you're looking at here that you feel like aren't getting enough touch. You feel like could be good players in the next level. Well, I mentioned Zach Frazier. I really like him, the center, you know. Um, interesting to me. He's going to be very polarizing at the quarterback position, but I, I like his game. Um, the, the receiver class is so deep. Uh, Leggett, the, the North Carolina receiver. I don't know how high he'll go, but all he did was make plays for them all the time. So, I mean, those are a couple that I'm, I'm keeping an eye on. That's two Gamecocks. Man, I didn't know I was going to do that on the podcast today. But, uh, yeah, I, I think definitely those are the guys to keep an eye on. And as always with the quarterback position, you start to lean ahead and think, all right, well, what about – I don't want a quarterback next this year. Who's my guy next year? And believe it or not, Shador Sanders will probably be at the top of that list, at or near the top of that list next season. Yeah, I know one guy, Jet fans, think I've been watching here because it's – talk that Joe Douglas is going to draft a quarterback late to sort of develop behind Aaron Rodgers here. It's like Jordan Travis and Florida State. I feel like he would have been a higher day two pick if he didn't tear his ACL at the end of the season. What do you think about him as a potential like late round option for a team looking to develop a quarterback? Yeah, you know, he is. He, he's definitely interesting and I think we'll, we'll keep an eye on him as it goes. I like his playmaking skills. I like his, his accuracy got better and he wasn't just a runner and, and he did well at Jordan uh, at Florida State this year until he, he had that injury. Now, I like him as a day two slash day three pick, much like, I don't want to even say Duggan or Bennett. I think he'll be better than those guys at the next level. But, uh, yeah, I, I hope he comes back and has a chance because he's played a lot of college football, and that experience will matter at the next level. He'll be a solid backup to start. Yeah, it feels like sort of like the Hendon Hooker thing last year at the Lions where they took him in the top of the second round. I think Jarvis be a little layers to the depth of the class. Yeah, why didn't you just say that earlier? You cut me off because Hendon Hooker is a great comparison. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is that, that's one that you know he'll have some time to develop behind, and you know, when he gets a chance to play, he'll probably let it rip. Absolutely, Bill. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. people. I'll follow your coverage of college football and uh, and follow you on social media. How can I do that? Yeah, I'm at BillBender92 at SportingNews.com, and you can just uh, follow all our draft coverage there. We'll have plenty of it. Uh, we're looking forward to it. And, you know, I know you and I like catch up every once every month or so, and this was a good conversation. Absolutely, Bill. Thanks for all the time. Really appreciate it. Hey, thank you.